It's so good to have you. There's just something about it when, when women gather. There's just something about the hunger. I, I want you just for a moment, there are men there, or some of them are leaving, they were in the band, and they, they are serving you, they're security, they're photographers, they, they made some coffee, hallelujah. Don't you want to just give all the men uh, looking after kids? Ha! Oh, let's pray for them. I have two beautiful boys and an amazing husband, Jackie and I. We're so privileged to lead this church. And um, um, it's an honor. I'm really having the time of my life. I love my job. <laughs> this is gay. How lucky can one girl be? But um, we have two boys. Yanku is 12 and Luvan is 8 years old. And this morning we took them to school. Livan was a bit sick last year, last week, last year, last week. And um, so he, it was his first time back at school this week. So yesterday did not go well. And this, today didn't go very well this morning. On the way to school, he started crying already. I got school. <laughs> Any moms raising some boys in the house? Hallelujah. God be with us. I said, Livan. And he, he said the following, he said, but I miss you guys so much when I'm at school. Oh, my heart. I it. Oh, I smell the girl. Do I owe? I'm like, Luvan, I understand. I completely understand. He's like, well, then just pray for me that I can stop crying. I'm like, okay, let's pray. Now, Jackie and Yanku is agreeing in prayer. And I'm like, Father, I thank you that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And Luvan will be all right today. And the crying will stop, Lord. And you will help him in Jesus' name. And Lord Jesus, I thank you. According to Psalm 121, you are the shadow at our right hand. And Luvan, with his dry sense of humor, immediately corrected me and said, Mommy, I know the word says that, but I'm left-handed. <laughs> So ladies, I don't know if you're right-handed or left-handed, but God is your shadow all around you. And He will cover you and He's got His hand on you. <laughs> I've got a word from the Lord for you. And um, I've, I've, the one title is probably, My Father is Yahweh. So that's the one title. But my main title for tonight is the following. When God writes a letter to my enemies, come on. So I don't know what you're up against in your life, but let me tell you something. God has got your back. He's a father. He's a jealous dad. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're up against. But your daddy's got you, girl. He sees everything. Jehovah El Roy, the God who sees, he hears how you're being treated and talked to. But let, let me jump into the word. I, I want to invite you to get involved in a small group or just start a small group. Where's my small group, ladies? Let me just see them. Ah! The girls at Bua for not. Ladies, I love you. We just had the time of our life this term. And they, they, God touched us, eh? God worked with us. I want to encourage you. And then I want to invite you to Sunday. My gorgeous husband is going to preach on my family matters. And that's so, so important. We are passionate about marriage as a, as a couple and a lead, leadership of this church. We are passionate about a godly family, raising our children God's way. Right, but let's jump into the word. God's got a word for you and um, I can't wait to share it. Let's jump into second, the second book of Kings, chapter 18. You've got some notes on your seat. Who's note taker? I'm a note taker. That's why we got you some notes, ladies, and a pen. 
pen and there's a notebook and it was sponsored and you've got a bookmark full of declarations and um, you're, gonna, you're going out of your armed girl. We're going to speak on Hezekiah of Judah and it starts from verse 1 and it says the following. In the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, that's his dad, began his rule over Judah. He was 25 years old. That's a young king. When he became king and he ruled for 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah, Ali Ayas. Now I want to give a little introduction here real quickly. Abijah, or I'm going to call her Abby for tonight, just so that we don't spend an hour on pronunciations. Abby was the daughter of a priest, Zechariah, the priest, Zechariah. Very interesting. History said that her dad trained her in dreams and visions and the interpretations of it. Very interesting. And the law. Now they only had the first five books. The Torah, that's all they had. We've got the whole Bible, girls. But that's all they had. And her dad trained her in it. But now listen to this. Okay. She goes on and marries the king. Ahaz. I would like to say he was a has. (laughs) You get me, girls. Me? You've got to be very careful now. If you're struggling, let's say he was a donkey. Okay? And I'll prove why. The word says he was an evil king. Severely evil. He cheated on her. He committed adultery. He practiced sexual sins with fertility gods. He led the nation of Israel away from God into idolatry. Worshipping Baal. That was the other God he worshipped. And he sacrificed his sons to these gods in six seal. But Queen Abby got married to Ahaz. And she fell pregnant and birthed Hezekiah. And she trained him to become a godly king irrespective of the fact that his dad was a has she raised him godly and well and i'm going to give you the first key for tonight it lies in identity I don't know what you're going through. I don't know who you're up against. I don't know who is lying to you at night in your head, in your mind. I want to tell you something. It lay in her identity. Abijah, if you take her name, Abby, Abba, comes from Abba, which means father. And Jah, Yah, means Yahweh, coming from, derived from Yahweh. Her name literally meant My father is Yahweh. So while the nation and my husband doesn't know what they're doing and where they're following and who they're worshipping, my God is Yahweh. I know who I am and I'm going to raise some godly kids to know where they're going in life. Number one, train yourself. Say train. train. Train yourself in your God given identity. Can you say after me, my father is Yahweh. Yahweh. Come on. Can I help you to train yourself tonight just a little bit? Let me help you. Let me tell you who you are. You are loved. You are chosen. You are forgiven. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made with a purpose. You are good girl. You are accepted. You are so beautiful. You are God Almighty's daughter. You are royalty. Your father is a king. Your father is Yahweh. That's who you are. The word goes on and it says the following. In God's opinion, he was a good king. This is now Hezekiah. 
Why? What makes you a good king? He kept the standards of his ancestor David. Number two, I'm going through these points real quick. Only God's opinion of myself matters. I don't know what voices you've heard in your life. I don't know who told you you're a rubbish. You won't amount to anything in your life. I don't know who tried to ruin you. I don't know what voices came into your primary school career, high school career, in your family. If it was granny who broke you or a family member. I don't know if you were raped or abused or what happened to you. But let me tell you, God's opinion about you has not changed. He made no mistake with you and he's got a good plan for your life his opinion is the only one that matters when it comes to you now he did the following he got rid of the local fertility shrines smashed the phallic stone monuments cut down the sex and religion asherah grows as a final stroke he pulverized the ancient bronze serpent that moses had made at that time the israelites had taken up the practice of sacrificing to it they had even dignified it with a name Nehushtan, the old serpent. <laughs> Point three, you need to get rid of every form of idolatry in your life, in your family, in your children's lives, in your home. Get rid of it. And I'm, I'm just going to be straight reading of palms, astronomy, reading the stars. Yeah, but Monday, I have to fini- finish the you. I read it from cover to cover. I have to, f- I read everything. Well, you are literally reading what the devil thinks about you. You're literally, if you're reading the stars, you're literally reading what the enemy has got planned for you. Usually it's not very good, but Turn to the creator, not to the creation. Turn to God. Get rid, get rid. Verse 5 to 6, Hezekiah put his whole trust in the God of Israel. There was no king quite like him, either before or after. He held fast to God, never loosened his grip, and obeyed to the letter Everything God had commanded Moses and God for his part held fast to him throughout all his adventures. Number four, I put my whole trust in God. Near bikini, not a little, not I'll serve you when it's good, Lord. No, no, my whole trust. In the good days, I'll praise you. In the bad days, I'll praise you. Your whole trust in God. You're asking Monday how. I'm trying. How? How do I do it? How, How do I hold on to God? Grip his word, girl. Join a small group or get to church more often. Some of us need to come to church more. But read the word of God. Get into the word. My word is alive and full of power. And if you open it, I promise you, he's going to speak to you. And his word is life and abundance. Get into the word. Grip his word and he'll hold on to you. He only acts on faith. He only reacts to his word. Speak the word. Keep the word. Verse 7 to 8, he revolted against the king of Assyria. He refused to serve him one more day. And he drove back the Philistines. (laughs) I like it. Number five, girls, take back what the enemy has stolen from you. In your life, in your marriage, in your children, in your schoolwork, in your future, in your finances, in your virginity, in your body, every area of your life, take it back. Don't don't just stand there and take all these blows from the enemy's camp. Come on, get up and fight, girl. We've got a fight on the inside of us that nobody can take away from you. If you realize my father is Yahweh, move devil. Verse 9 to 16. In the fourth year of Hezekiah, king of Assyria, attacked Samaria. He threw a siege around it. It's now neighboring Jerusalem. Close to Hezekiah's kingdom. After three years, he captured Samaria. The king of Assyria took Israel into exile. 
in the 14th year of king hezekiah die yana sena <laughs> king of assyria attacked all the outlying fortress cities of judah and captured them now is coming in real close it's hitting home King Hezekiah sent a message to the king of Assyria. I've done wrong. I admit it. Pull back your army. I'll pay whatever tribute you set. The king of Assyria demanded tribute from Hezekiah, king of Judah. 11 tons of silver and a ton of gold. Hezekiah even went into the temple of God and started getting the gold and the silver that is meant for the worship of God and took it all to this king. Point 6. The enemy will try to overwhelm you. I don't know who's in this house who feels a bit overwhelmed tonight, but God's got a word for you. God's got your back. It feels like I'm surrounded, Monday, you don't understand. I am being attacked from every side. It's in my house. It's my children. It's my husband. Even news that people around me aren't making it financially. They are starving and the enemy is trying. It's knocking on your door and he wants to demand and take your best years, your best life, your finances, your health, young people, young ladies, your virginity is knocking at your door. He wants your Your youth he wants your future he will try everything to overwhelm you and to make you crack but you're not going to listen to this listen to why verse 17 so the king of Assyria sent his tr- top three military chiefs with a strong military force to king Hezekiah in Jerusalem then he stepped forward and spoke in Hebrew loud enough for everyone to hear listen carefully to the words of the great king the king of Assyria don't let Hezekiah fool you he can't save you don't let Hezekiah bring you that line about trusting in God telling you God will save us this city will never be abandoned to the king of Assyria don't listen to Hezekiah He doesn't know what he's talking about. Listen to the king of Assyria. Deal with me and live a good life. It sounds like the devil. Did God really say you shouldn't eat of the fruit of this tree? If you are the son of God, jump from this roof. If you are the son of God, fall down and worship me and I'll give you the kingdoms of this world. He promises the good life young ladies he promises good things it's going to be lacker at that party it's a lacker okie man it's a lacker guy just come just go for it no 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 don't listen to his akaya don't listen to his lies telling you god will save us has there ever been a god anywhere who delivered anyone from the king of assyria <laughs> i want to tell you something number 7 Mostly the attacks on women comes through forms of fear, terror, intimidation and humiliation. He'll always try that with you. Fear, anxiety, depression, terror, intimidation, humiliation. That is his strategy on women, on people, always. It's never changed. You can know that's what he does. That is how he focuses in on your life, studies you from your birth for many, many years. But God's got a better plan. You don't have to give in to the fear anymore. You don't have to allow the enemy to strangle you at night with anxiety attacks or with asthma attacks. God is going to set you free through the power of the Holy Spirit and your life will never be the same again the name is syria literally is nineveh where where um jonah went to these people were intense they literally used terror they terrorized the people if i must mention to you tonight what they did to people how they intimidated people with just utmost terror and that's why they just handed over to this king you would be horrified you need to know that assyria is the country still to the day to this day where the terrorists come from the planes that flew into 911 guess where the terrorists came from from assyria the country of assyria Why is he using terror in your life? Because God birthed every woman to 
be loved. And according to 1 John 4.18, the perfect love of God cast out fear. Now the people were silent. No one spoke a word. For the king had ordered, don't anyone say a word. Not one word. Point eight, I want to tell you, don't speak to fools. I'm not saying you married a has. All I'm saying is don't engage a terrorist. Don't speak to fools. Choose your battles. And I've seen, if I can keep my mouth shut, and I'm one of those that I can really give you a comeback on a good day. But if I can manage to have the self-control of Holy Spirit and keep my mouth shut on a good day, I've seen how the Spirit of God just rocks up in my life. And I go on my knees and I close my door like Matthew commands me to do. And I take it to Jesus on my knees. I've seen God rock up in His power and change my situation. 2 Kings 19, 1-4, when Hezekiah heard it, he too ripped his robes apart, dressed himself in rust burlap, he fasted. Then he went into the temple, I'm telling you, some of you need to come to church more. <laughs> he sent Eliakim to the prophet Isaiah, we are better together. Choose your friends in difficult times carefully. Don't get into the temptation to pick up your phone and phone the wrong girlfriend and discuss your husband or your problems or your school or your teacher with the wrong girlfriend. Get some good friends around you that's going to take out the Bible and tell you, girl, you need a word from the Lord and I'm going to pray with you and I'm going to fast with you and God is going to answer you in this. We're better together, girls. Number nine, go to God, not to friends. Ask God's people to pray with you. Some of you need better friends. Some of you girls need to lose some friends. Some of us girls need to let go of some family ties. Woo! Hits a nerve there. Nay. Nee. They're not good for you. Get out. You don't have to have relationship with people who constantly torment you, constantly belittle you, constantly humiliate you. Get out. Don't. Walk away. Let it run. God be with you. Verse 6 to 7. Isaiah answered them, tell your master God's word. It's so good to have good friends who knows God's word. Don't be at all concerned about what you've heard from the king of Assyria, bootlicking errand boys. These outrageous blasphemies. Here's what I'm going to do. A Flicked him with self-doubt. He's going to hear a rumor and frightened for his life. You see, if you sow terror into people's lives, be careful because you will reap because there's a God Almighty who's going to turn it back on your head and bring it back into their lives. He'll retreat to his own country. Once there, I'll see to it that he'll get killed. Shoo. There's a scripture that says, Vreselik is dit om die, in die hande van een levende God te val. I do fear God, not in a bad way, in the most respectful, honorable way. I do keep my mouth shut when it comes to God's people or other Christians. I'd rather I keep my mouth shut. I'd rather keep my mouth shut. Because there is a God who sees, who hears, who listens, and he turns things around, takes the same seed, throws it right back into your life. Number 10, God will always encourage you, girl. <laughs> I'm telling some of you, all you need tonight is a word from God. Your life won't be the same again. You need a word 
from the Lord. I'm so encouraged by my small group lady sitting up there. We were practicing this term, how to hear the voice of God, how to believe we've got a purpose and a calling even as young as they are. Come on, girls, stand up. Let them see. I want them to see you. I'm so proud of you. Stand up. Come on. And they're taking notes and they serve God at very young ages. I'm so proud of them. And you know what? Yella come and sit. Yella is gorgeous. I could love you. We went to Rocker Mama's last night. We had the biggest milkshakes in the house. And we were encouraged about, God will always encourage you with the right friends about how God speaks. And the one lady, Leah, stood up. She said, Pastor Mandy, you said that you carried a small little Bible when you were at school. And I prayed. I'm like, Lord, I want that Bible. I want to carry that when I go to school. And Pastor Mandy, the next week, you'll never guess. The Gideons came to our school and they handed out the exact same Bible. I've got my small Bible. I'm going to school with my Bible. And we were going around and the girls started saying, um, Minka, I took my Bible out at school. I hope I'm not embarrassing you girls. I took my Bible out at school. As I took it out, I hear a voice saying to me, ooh, you're going to be really embarrassed for doing this, taking out your Bible. And as I got that thought, I took my Bible and I stuck it up in the air for everyone to see. (laughs) You go, girl. You're my kind of girl. And so Liska shot back. And she said the following, I got to school and God gave me a word for someone. And I walked right up to them and said, I've got a word from the Lord for you. And I gave it to them. And this person's like, what? How did you know? How in the world is this possible? And I gave the person the word and I said, this is alive and full of power. Yeah, you try it. And that person opened the word of God and God gave that person a scripture that said exactly the same thing. You go girls. That's what I'm talking about. A word from the Lord will always encourage you. A word from God is all you need to take courage and get back up again. God will always encourage you. 8 to 13. So he sent another envoy with orders to deliver this message to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Don't let that God that you think so much of. Listen. The moment you get a word from the Lord, the moment God speaks, the enemy is right ready at the other ear with another message for you. This is exactly what's happening. (laughs) Don't let that God that you think so much of keep stringing you along with the line, Jerusalem will never fall to the king of Assyria. That's a barefaced lie. You know the track record of the king of Assyria. Country after country laid waste, devastated. And what makes you think you'll be an exception? Hezekiah took the letter from the envoy and read it. He went to the temple of God and spread it out before God. And Hezekiah prayed. Oh, how he prayed. (laughs) Which brings me to my next point. And you can get that writing pad ready, my friend. Because we're going to write down some things before God tonight. Some terrors, some problems, some humiliations. You're going to write it out and we're going to spread it out before God tonight. Go to God again and pray. He went back into the temple, spread it out before God, took the letter. I don't know if you've got a letter from the attorney. I don't know if you, you, you're going to be evicted soon. I don't know what letters you got, but tonight we're going to spread it out before God. Don't just pray once. Think God doesn't listen to me. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't hear me. He loves you so much. You pray again, girl. You go to church again. You get up again. You try serving Him again. He'll rock up in your life. He'll show that terror who's God. He'll show Him whose daughter you are. Don't give up. Get back up. This is what He prayed. God, God of Israel, seated in majesty, you are the one and only God, sovereign over all kingdoms on earth, maker of heaven, maker of earth. Come on, worship God, ladies. 
Open your ears, God, and listen. Open your eyes and look. Look at this letter that he sent. A brazen insult to the living God. The facts are true, O God. The kings of Assyria have laid waste countries and kingdoms. (laughs) Huge bonfires they made of their gods. But now, O God, our God, save us from raw Assyrian power. Make all kingdoms on the earth know that you are God, the one and only it wasn't long before Isaiah sent word to Hezekiah God will respond to my enemy God will respond to your enemy God is seeing what you're going through girl God is seeing what courage it took just to get yourself here tonight And God honors you for that. But God's going to respond. He's getting ready to act on your behalf. The word says he's an advocate. He's a comforter. He's a helper. He's a sidekick. (laughs) Come on. He's your God. My father's Yahweh. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to make it. Because God will respond to my enemy. God's word. You've prayed to me regarding Sena, king of Assyria. I've heard your prayer. This is my response to him. I rephrased it. This will now be the Mandi Birkes translation. When God speaks to my enemy, it sounds like this. My daughter holds you in utter contempt. My daughter thinks you're nothing but scum. Who do you think it is you have insulted? Who do you think you've been bad mouthing? God Almighty, that's who you sent people to humiliate. God, you bragged. And I, God, listened. I know where you live, boy. I know when you sit down and when you come and when you go. And yes, I've marked every one of your temper tantrums against me. It's because of your temper that I'm putting my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth like a horse and turning you back to where you came from. And this, my daughter, will be your confirming sign. Right now, you might not see the breakthrough. For a moment, things might be tough. But soon, I will make you harvest. My daughter, everything you've sown, I will bless you. And your family will be blessed. And your children will be blessed. You will survive this. I, God, will see to it. I will make things happen for you, girl. To sum up, this is what God says regarding your terrors tonight. He won't enter your life any longer. No weapon formed against you will prosper. He won't come near you. He'll go home by the same road he came. He won't enter your life any longer. God's word. I shield you tonight. My daughter, I will save my girl. My father is Yahweh. (laughs) And so it happened that that very night an angel from the Lord came and massacred. 185,000 Assyrians. My God is Yahweh. My God is mighty. When the people of Jerusalem got up the next morning, there it was. A whole camp full of corpses. And what happened to the king? His own sons. Well, listen to this. His whole camp is lying full of corpses. But God lets him live to see it. How's that for terror? He wakes up and everyone is dead except for him. And he runs by the same road from which he came back to his country and while he's worshiping his false gods in his temple his own sons come in and murder him God is big 
I want to invite you to take one moment and write down your terrors. Who's terrorizing you? When you're alone at night, what lies are he, is he feeding you? Swarming around you at night. Write it down. Take out your notebook. Write it down. Like as a guy, we're going to spread it out before God tonight. Come on. You don't have to live with it any longer. We're going to do exactly what this king did. He's giving you a tool. He's giving you an opportunity. You're waiting on people to help you. You're waiting on people to counsel you. And God is standing ready. He's saying, here I am. Come on, my girl. Write it down. I've got you. I'm seeing what you're going through. Come on. Write it down. I'm ready to help. I'm here to help. I love you. Tonight, your life is going to turn around. Write it down person, people who hurt you. Monday, I can't forgive. It's okay tonight. God's going to help you. But let them go. Write their names down. This person, this is what they did to me. It's anonymous. We're going to spread it out before God. I want to invite you to stand with me. If you finish writing, you can stand and start lifting up, up before God. This is between you and God. This is private. I've got my things. <laughs> Just start lifting it up to God. Spread it out for Him to see. Monday, that's just weird. <laughs> well, Hezekiah did it. <laughs> Take courage, girl. He's seeing it. <laughs> he loves you. He honors your faith. Lift it up before Him. If you couldn't write, you can lift your hands up before him and just say, Lord, see, just see, just see me tonight. Just see what I've been going through in my life. Here it is, Lord. All the pain, all the agony, all the stress, all the tension, all the pressure, mounting and mounting. I can't take it anymore. It's yours. It's yours. You can just lift it up. Some of you are already engaging with God. That's it. Even if you just say, Lord, it's yours. It's yours. I can't take it anymore, but it's yours. Not tonight, it's yours. I'm spreading it out before you. It's yours. I'm lifting it up before a living God. Not a dead God. The Buddhas. The idols. Stone dead gods. No, <laughs> he's alive. He's got ears. He hears. He's got eyes. He sees. Father, every person lifting up their needs before you, whether they are sitting or standing, whether they are lifting up their hands or their hearts, see them now. Help them now you are the living God I pray that you will breathe on them I pray that you will take their burdens and crush it I pray that you will break the yoke on their necks on their shoulders every negative word that's been spoken over their lives through family members, through people around them. I come against that through the power of your word and I call your anointing to come into being before them tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we take this piece of paper. We've lifted it up before you and as an act and a declaration, Yere fromol ons het opvanand. And we declare that through the blood of Jesus, this has been dealt with on the cross of Jesus Christ. And tonight we crush it with the authority that God has given me. I crush it, Lord, and I throw it away. I throw it out. It's not mine. You can throw it anywhere in this 
building. We've got amazing people cleaning up. We're going to make a bonfire and braai it tomorrow. And that is, ex- yes, throw it, girl. Throw it away from you as an act and a manifestation. Don't worry, I can take it. <laughs> throw it, throw it. Get it out of your life. Never again. Let the weight go. Throw it out of your life. Woo! I feel like breathing again. I feel like dancing again. I feel like living again. Thank you, Jesus, that right now I declare your kingdom come, your will be done in our lives. As it is in heaven, so let it be on earth and in my life. And I won't settle any longer for every lie that I've been bombarded with, Lord. I am holy. I am accepted. I am chosen by the God Almighty. I am beautiful. And I receive it. And I believe it in Jesus' name. For one moment, I want to invite you to just close your eyes. There's such a wonderful presence of God here tonight. Maybe you're sitting here or standing here and you're saying, Monday, I don't know what you're ranting about tonight. Maybe I've never given my life to God. Like these girls, I'm not as excited as they are. Maybe I've drifted far away from the Lord. And tonight you might say, I need God. I need to recommit. I need to come back and tie back my identity in my daddy. If that's you, I want to invite you. All our eyes are closed in the house. Put your hand up for God to see as high as you can. And you can put it right back down again. It's between you and God. Lord, yeah, I'm coming tonight. I'm your daughter. I want to be your child because John 1 verse 12 says, An amo vatom aniem gee die mag om a kind van God te wees. Everyone who accepts Jesus, you're getting the right to be called a child of God. But you have to confess Him. You have to say it with your mouth and believe it in your heart. And I'm going to give you an opportunity. If that's you, we're all going to join you in this prayer. If you want to give your life to God, if you're tired of living hell on earth, if you're tired of living a sinful life tonight, I want to invite you to pray after me and say, Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Come and live in me. Come and set me free of the wrong paradigms, wrong mindset, wrong thoughts in my life. I confess my sins. I'm a sinner. I need your grace. And tonight, Lord, I'm getting out. My garment of righteousness. I'm a good girl. I'm a beautiful girl. Tonight I dress myself with the armor of God. I'm a strong girl. I'm a brave girl. I hear your voice. I follow you. You are my God. And as of tonight, I will serve you. All the days of my life. Amen. That's who you are. You're his child. We're cheering you on. And guess what? Heaven is cheering you on. All the angels are partying tonight because of you. That is incredible. I'm going to invite my prayer team to come and join me in front. We're going to dismiss you in one moment, but there's a very sweet presence of God. If you need prayer tonight, if you're one of the girls who gave your life to Jesus tonight, if you have problems tonight, if you need hope tonight, if you just need a hug tonight, if you need the love of God tonight, if you just need some agreement tonight that somebody would just agree with you that God's going to come through and these curses are broken tonight. 
I want to invite you to come to these beautiful ladies and they're going to be praying with you. They're going to bless you. They're going to anoint you. They're going to love you. And they're going to be there for you. They're going to take down your details. You, my girl, are not alone. I want you to confess after me and say, my father is Yahweh. Father, tonight I pray over these girls as I release them, these women, these ladies, these daughters of the Most High God. I declare their spiritual ears open and attentive to the voice of God. They will lean back against your chest and hear your heart beat for them because it beats in love. And it beats in encouragement. It beats in compliments, Lord. And I pray that they will listen only to that. I seal their ears and their minds and their eyes and their gateways off with the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And I declare that they will not give entry to the king of Assyria of terror, fear, anxiety, depression in their lives. And tonight... Their lives changes around because their minds changes about themselves. I'm a daughter of Yahweh. I'm a daughter of Yahweh. And I thank you that you will respond on their letter with the letter that you will write to their enemies tonight, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, deal with the enemies, Lord, tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, I call heaven into remembrance for every idle word spoken over their lives. Deal with it, deal with it, deal with it tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we praise you for it. We love you for it. We honor you. You're a good God. Be glorified in this place. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Your identity lies in Jesus Christ. You are a child of God. May you have a blessed day and we will see you soon.